Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Lenny's Not a Lenny Screw Guy. Today we're doing something pretty special, I think. It's called OpenSUSE and it's Micro S and it's DistroBox and it's Window Managers. All one show, yay. So, yeah, check it out, man. So, we are going to go, yeah, install a Window Manager in a DistroBox on Micro OS. Pretty cool. I'm not sure what the use cases for this are exactly. But yeah, so I mean I can see maybe um a uh, person who codes and stuff and that kind of thing. They want to do something more than just put commands, they want to run graphic application. Rather than just typing in a command from the terminal and having it uh, instigate a instance of a graph they may want to just check out menus make sure all like work can work too now i also should rec note that the, the micro s doesn't officially support this uh method of doing stuff so you know it kind of goes against some of their goals as far as making a system the new user can work on pretty easy they don't consider window manager is very user friendly but by and large, they aren't. You have to know key bindings and stuff like that, at least enough to get you around so you can do things. But it does have menus and stuff like that, and there are a lot of people that like window managers too, so, like me, I like window managers. So I'm going to show you how to install I through window manager on a distro box, Debian distro box on OpenSUSE Micro OS. Now, the instructions I got for this are a little bit different. I'll show the website, GitHub website, that you and I have all these URIs and down in the uh, description for you to click on if you want to look this over. It's a GitHub page for it, and basically, this is how you install it. And uh, yeah, so you go down here. You see Arts there, Debian, Ubuntu. And uh, let me open Seuss there. Tumbleweed, yep, right. Second one on the top. You got all those interesting distros and stuff. Oops. Made a boo boo. There you go. It's wrong. So then you have all these, this README MD. You have all these things that you can do. Explain what the distro box does and is, what installation is, or methods, dependencies, so probably with that root, uninstallation, error compatibility, usage, uh, all the different commands you can use on the terminal for that. And now this is a terminal application, so you have to be aware of that. If you don't like terminal, you probably won't like this very much. Now you see a useful tip section. Now, the one the article I'm going to be using is right here. DistroBox is awesome. Running window manager in desktop environments using DistroBox. I don't really talk about the in desktop environments that much, but it does talk about window managers. This is what I use right there. DistroBox is awesome. And how to run window managers in desktop environments. So, I'm going to be following basically this instructions. If you want to follow along, you can go to it and you can check it out. So, anyway, we got that. And let's see. So, ready to start this project. Now, this, I think, you, on this uh, uh, Instructions for installing window managers in the distro box on a distribution. You can put this distro box on any distribution you want using installation instructions. The cool thing about Micro OS is that one, it's a um, immutable file system, and two, we're going to mute it a bit to install window manager on it, but we'll see how you do that. Three, yeah, you kind of have to. Uh, you have to do some uh, modifications to the things to get it to work right. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Oh, but distro boxes are cool because you can uh, install them on any distro pretty much. 
and you can run in, in like you can run Arch instance, you can run Arch programs on a Debian based system or something like that. Or OpenSUSE or any, any of these that work. And they saw the little list that we have over here. Yeah. These are all the the uh, packages that they currently are packaging in their repos. This uh Sister box. So you can see all these there are different ones here. You can go if you have any if you're on any of these then you can just uh, install it straight away or or you got alter method down here to install it using curl or git or whatever. So you can read through all those because the cool thing is MicroOS comes with it pre installed. The reason it does that is because because uh it's one of the second, it's the second recommended way for you to install applications on macOS, which it uses containerized applications. So, that's what that is. Okay. Oh, yeah, so I'm showing you things you aren't even looking at, probably. Yeah. So, anyway. You got your distro boxes in there. And so we're going to start with our installation that we did last Saturday of, uh, of micro S onto my laptop over here, the Acer Spire laptop. And we're going to take a peek at it and see how you do this thing. Alrighty. We're going to check it out and see how it works. Now we're on our desktop of my Aspire computer over here. And it's, uh, got micro s hard installed on it and so it's got all the distro boxes i've installed it so i i can use my cursor as barrier after because of that i have to have x11 i tried wayland but barrier won't work on wayland just says nope not 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 there yet so the first thing we got to do on here is open a terminal which i have it set to key binding super return and we can get with it, huh? So distro box is, is a distro row box. That's a basic command. Then you have a series of uh, other commands to use to do things like create. And... Uh, and that's create function. So then you have to list out the name of the distro you're going to give it. Whatever name you want, you can give it 2-2 two, two or whatever. However you want to name it, you know. Some, but most people name it, you know, whatever distribution they're installing there is. So we're going to go Debian. Excuse me, hold it. Debian. And then we have I, the dash I, which means install Debian, comma 11. Now you can just put Debian there and it'll should install just whatever the latest release, of, stable release of Debian is available. But I tried 12 one time and it didn't work because so I guess you can't pull testing down yet. So yeah, so anyway, Debian 11. And then when you get all that in there in, it's going to create the name of Debian for the for the dist distro box. And it's going to install Debian 11 on it. This is on OpenSUSE MicroS, by the way. So watch it watch happen. Robot. List. Uh, probably already have a Debian there. That's why I just... It's having problems, so yeah, so it's trying to create another Debian called Debian, and it doesn't like that at all. Okay, we're going to go create Ubuntu, so we don't have any problems, hopefully. We're going to do DistroBox. Create. Hmm. We're going to name 
this. I'm going to I am going to maybe. Here install Ubuntu. two. Should install whatever the latest version of Ubuntu is. The Ubuntu latest. So it's installing Ubuntu there. There you are. Now to go into the distro box, you just go in and we'll start it up and we'll begin it. So we go into uh, distro. So no enter no. Enter my booter. Okay, now it's gonna, it's gonna put install basic packages. It's like a startup thing, so it should go faster after this when you go back into it, but yeah, this will I'm gonna speed this part up or edit it out or whatever so you don't have to watch wait for all this to have happen. Anyway, it should go pretty quick, but it's a little slow sometimes, so we'll let it go. It's gonna install all basic packages. Now the cool thing about the one of the cool things about this distro box is that when you create these distro boxes, it has its own file system, containerized file system. But your home directory is the home directory that everything else is where everything else is at. So, for instance, if you write a, a document in one of the distro boxes, save it to your home directory, and you can open it up in your host system or you can open up in the other distro box they all see the same home directory that's pretty cool i think allows you to create things so yeah they have this uh setup's complete so it's setup's complete and you're in ubuntu right now and you see it's got rick at my ubuntu dot aspire 5 on my aspire acer aspire computer so aspire Anyway, uh, yeah, so let's do some like install i3, huh? <laughs> now you may have to go to wikis and your whatever distribution you're at or you install on, on the distro box to find out how well uh, how to install it. But yeah, for this, I believe it's just sudo apt install, whoops, install. And uh, I three. See all those dependencies it throws in there? It's because it's first thing, because it does it's a very minimalistic install, it installs dependencies first thing. We want to continue, yes. Now we're running through loading all these things and installing it also. Yeah, but as I was saying, this is really cool the way it works, so. Actually installing i3 in the distro box on uh, on your computer now. Well, the trick is to get it to log into it. That's where the rubber meets the road. The 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 part you got to adjust for is whenever you, you know these things they go into the login screen. The login screen you got is on the host itself. So not only doesn't come with its own uh, DM. Display manager, login manager type thing. So you have to do some special special things. That's setting up. Got some red there on what that's about. Been way up there to get to it. After it's done, I guess see what it was. There it is. Now you got i3 installed on your. Computer. Now let's go up there and see what that was real quick, so we can see what there was. There's ways up, but yeah, see what the error was. See if there's anything we need to do to fix it, or is something we can ignore or whatever. Yeah. 
Okay, FCH mod of SRB failed, operation not permitted. Okay. Obviously, it's probably trying to do some on the main system. We'll have to hope that it's nothing critical. That you can just keep going and it'll work like normal. It's all I3. So now what you can do is you can type I3 and it should fire up, I think. Can't run because it's got the main host desktop environment that it uh, running, so I can't run this while that's running. There you go. There you see your i3 desktop file there. That one right there. I'm gonna copy that file i3 desktop over to your home directory, which will make it available for your main system, as we said. So what you want to do there is you want to copy that, and then you want to go cp dot slash, which means it's going to pull it from this directory you're in, i3 desktop. And we're going to install that over on. We're not going to install, we're going to copy it over to there. Uh, Home directory. Let's do the trick. Oh, except we gotta do sudo, I think. Okay, now, you should have copied that over to your home directory. So once that's done, then you can exit out of this, and you're done here. Now you're back to your host directory. They had it, and if you look at this, you'll see it's i3 desktop right there. So we just thought, so now what you need to do is you need to create yourself a little uh, script. And what I did, I call it my i3, it's a simple script. So what you use, whatever editor you want. I installed nano on here so I can use nano because I'm used to that, but. The only one that, that Microsoft comes installed with pre out of the box is Vim. Which people like Distro Box DistroTube would like that quite a bit. Derek Taylor. Sure. But uh, but for me I'm used to nano and I can do that pretty well, so I'll use that. So nano i3. Oh my i3 is what we're gonna create. Uh, this true hash. And bash. Okay, so we got bin bash. Now what you gotta do is you gotta look at the instructions over here. You got to get your iSession desktop. That's ISWM. These ISWM for their example here, but you have to go to just for i3. But you have to do just just for different things. So Okay, there it is. So yeah, yeah they list all up here what you have to enter. So X host. And plus I sigh. I didn't get that right. Hold on. Local user. Colon. And then. User. This first thing I learned, what that does is it basically identifies you as a system, as a graphical, allows you to do graphical things on 
block run i3 window managers and stuff like that so yeah i'm not sure exactly all of the ins and outs of that but that's what he says it does so trust him <laughs> so anyway now the next thing you got in you got to run in a distro box command so they they input that there because a lot of times in distro box enter and what this capital T does it means you're not going to run this in a terminal basically so it's gonna it's not gonna allow you to go into a terminal with in it because you don't wear window managers and terminals, do you? No. So, so then we got that, then you're in. He called it my own boot too, didn't we? I'm boot too. And now when you do that, now you have to the space two two dashes and then you go here and you put in your app. And you put it in parentheses or not parentheses but uh, quotation marks. Quotation marks. So now the app we're gonna run is more I three there. Now you can save this and I entered everything right, this box. Yes, it out. Okay, so now it's saved in there. Created created the uh I three. Now you can change copy it into your uh directory where your one of your pads are. Where's pad at? Well See what pads you got by doing and there's your pads now probably where i want to install it is probably uh user bin because that's where all user bin stuff is at but you can install wherever you want now i had some trouble installing it last time in user local bin which it is in there right over there but for some reason I never would show up on my thing. If I moved it to bin, it showed up rather than worked after that. So, yeah. So, and you got to use, you got to move your my i3 over to a path, somewhere on your path where it'll pick it up now. I don't advise using a home directory path to put it in just because it's, it can be a little tricky in that because I don't know if it sees home when you do when you do that. So just to be on the safe side I put it in one of the system files directory. And now you can try one of the home and see if it'll work for you. I don't know if it worked for you. I don't didn't really try it myself per se. I put it in my home rick bin right there. And maybe it will work, maybe it won't, but it didn't seem to see home when I was in the transactional update section of the steel. So we'll see. Anyway, so then in order to install it to one of the paths, I, you know, you got to use transactional updates because that's a part of the situation. You go in the shell of transactional updates. It's like going in a root shell, basically, on your system. You can change most of your settings and stuff now you can get into your etc directory and your rot directory root directory without going through its transactional updates but that's where a lot of configuration files are kept but yeah so also i had an, there's another situation where because i couldn't see the home directory when i was in transactional updates so i have to copy this over to one to root directory that's what I'm going to do now. Is if you do a transactional update after you're done transactional update, it'll override the transactional update, and then you lose change you made the first transactional update, unless you put a dash C in the command, like transactional updates dash C, then you put your uh, shell or 
whatever else you're going to use to package all packages or whatever so we we don't have to do anything with that we can just go back in and new shell and and do all that after we get everything set up i didn't got quite get things set up over here so so yeah so we got my i3 in there now we need to go into the Okay, now we can do it. All right, so yeah, here and just a user in and my three. Oh no, no, you don't want to change that one. Here's what you can do though. You can copy this. And copy this over here. Right that. Then we can inspect down. This is name, so you don't want to change that. Which one changes the exact right here. So There. What we've done is we basically, what's really critical, I don't know if it's critical for this try exec section, but uh, over here in exec equals user bin my i3. I change it from i3. When it loads up, what it's going to do, when you put in your whole system, it's going to start that instance my i3, which will start your window manager after you go into your instance of Ubuntu. Cool, huh? So, uh, you have to make sure this is configured right so it'll work. <laughs> so this is what's going to go in the X sessions directory when we, get, when we get back in transactional updates. Okay. Save. Exit. Okay, so now we need to copy both those back to root again. Okay, copy. I3 pseudo copy since it's root still. So yeah, pseudo I3 desktop. We're going to copy the file I3 desktop here to root. Okay, we're also going to copy sudo. I'm going to move it over there and so copy it so we don't really want to script. I'll say a home directory, I don't think. Clutter up my landscape, so move i3, i4, i3 to root. Okay, now, now we can go back in to turn this update and do what we were planning on doing before. Yeah, one other thing I want to do real quick, so, sudo, change mod, root, my, i3, oh yeah. That's how I want to do that. Plus X. That'll change it so it makes it executable, basically. It's not executable, it won't show up on your, your login menu when you log in your system. So, I think we got all that covered. Now we can go into transaction updates and get what we want done done there. All right. So sudo transactional updates 
state and chill. Okay. And see this time it's going faster and then now you see we should be on twenty, snapshot twenty up. There. Snapshot twenty. That means it's snapshot nineteen and never loaded or nothing happened. We really didn't do anything anyway, just fiddle around for a while and then oh we gotta go back and do this. So snapshot twenty. So we go here now we go to cd reason i do it this way rather than just doing a copy command the whole thing that way i make sure i'm in the right spot and that kind of thing so that's why i tend to do it so now we're there and we do that find out that it's all there like that plasma desktop it's the only ones listed here so we will now copy from root 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 uh i three desktop. We'll copy it here to this one and so we do that again. There's your i three desktop modified. So that's there. Now we're going to go over to CD. Um, user bin. That's where all the programs are at. Yep. We're going to copy. We have sudo copy. Uh, root my. Here. Now we make sure it's all good. Okay, so my three would be right up there when it right, or we can't see. There it is right there. And by the color of it, it looks like it's executable and all that good stuff. So you should find it when you put it on your system. Good. So once you've done all that, up to those two things where you go, hit exit. Now, one of the things you have to remember is you have to, before you do anything else, you hit snapshot if you want to activate the snapshot because nothing will happen until you reboot your system. You reboot your system, then it will uh, reboot and it'll root in the new snapshot you just created. And you should see if we're lucky and everything works as we plan it, you should see it work come up. Now I have it set, I think, for. Yeah, I tend to say Mac OS is for. Uh, Brought my cup boot in because I don't know. I don't. Okay, so down here, your desktop plasma. See if I3 is there. No, it's not. Just plasma X11, plasma Whalen. Give a little log in first, then. Let's we'll see what connected. what shows where. Okay. So we're over here in fire. We're check on LL. In. I yeah, it shows it's there. That's good. 
And about this one I had trouble with getting the i3 desktop to show up. So let's see what it says. It was i3 desktop, but it's not activated for some reason. So it shows everything's there where we put it, and it shows it's uh set my three. I said just to just make sure, double sure. So we'll do this on there and see if it goes all the way. Go. Nope. It shows i3. Of course, i3 is installed on the main system, so it's not seeing it. So what we have to do then is we have to go back in the transaction updates and edit that again to reflect the right thing. I don't know why I got changed but back to i3, but it did for some weird reason. So we'll have to go do another transactional update and change it back. So it should be. So point to my i3 and so just i3 ready so we'll just, uh, i do have some aliases set in here this is a this is a point like so i got transaction updates i've got them done over here There you got that there. You can just enter in TU and it'll do that pseudo transactional update. I also got one where you install packages. So you can do that and I'll install a package. Whatever package you put after it. Also, I have a DBD box up here, DB for distro box. So, yeah, so I can. The shortcuts I have, so it makes it a little easier. So that's why I'm going to just uh, TU. Yeah, and then right into it. Everyone, snapshot twenty one. Okay, so now we got to use it. We are now we're gonna do a pseudo or oh, two nano nano I think this up. Alrighty. Now go here. Okay, so we do that, and yeah, user bin at i3 is going to run and execute that file. I'm going to leave that i3, I'm just going to test out. It seems like it should work without it, but who knows. I think once you do this and boot into it again, it should show up. Everything else is correct. So let's uh, save this file, mainly. Yeah. X of it. X of actual updates. We do a pseudo reboot. Bluetooth disconnected. And we'll reboot the system and hopefully this time it'll work. Fingers crossed. Okay. Didn't show up here. Not right, good news. Sometimes transactional updates don't do it, would take effect right away or something like that. So, not sure what the deal is. Maybe after logging in, it'll work. Huh? 
There it is. You can see right there my change I made. Right there. These are been my i3. Now let's make sure that my i3 still is showing as a my i3. Oh, uh, another window manager. Yeah, I see it went into there and it said, oh, another window manager seems to be running, which is plausible on the desktop, of course. But so what I know it wouldn't go into it. It'd give me that error. But if it gave the rest of it, then it was working. As expected, we'll find out what goes on here. Let me pause this and I'll, and I'll come back and I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm going to try some and see if it works. Okay. L. And we'll go back into this. Go back and edit that file. Just put simplify things, put my i3 on there, see if it sees it works. They'll find it whatever directory it's in, that way you don't have any complications, hopefully. So, save. And exit. Bluetooth disconnected. We'll try it again, see how it goes. There it is. I three. Password. And it should boost into the Bluetooth version of X I three. It all is correct. And there you are. You're an I3. Now, this doesn't show you a whole lot here, but yeah, you can do things. So, so I think it's because I have my configuration file and it doesn't have programs to run things installed in this I3 here. So you have to do things like. Uh, now we have to go back to the distro box and solve programs it needs. And I think the way to do that is just kill the machine and then. So uh, it is install some programs in the distro box and you're ready to roll. It's using a configuration file for my installation of i3 before on another, uh, another time. And Back in here. Now we can. Back over here. There we go. And we gonna go in to enter. Enter. I am to. See how fast it went that time? <laughs> You're there. So, yeah, so we need to install some programs here. Do the app. Doll. Uh, Itty. Brophy. Do other programs. 
Uh, nitrogen. Yes, yeah, so we should be work for the time being, I think. Really get us cooking where we can get new things in there. Yes. Yeah. So now we should be able to exit and log out. Bluetooth disconnected. Here, nice out three. You know, we probably don't need any wallpaper on yet, but attempt to wallpaper at least. Yeah, I didn't quite do the whole thing, but attempt to wallpaper. So, yeah, you can see we made some progress. We saw an action to restore that wallpaper, not very clear. Now, uh, we should. Be able to hit Control D with your rope. Yeah. I do. Oh, I see. Yeah, because it's like egg sessions. So. Yeah, this program's. Yes, that works. The uh, question is, what screen is it gonna? Yeah, I have to go through all the screen. Maybe you get the impression. You get that, then you get kitty cooking on that on that screen over there. And yeah, so we got it cooking, and we got ropey on it. We got nitrogen on it. Basically installed half of the wallpaper on this screen, half wallpaper. On other half's on that screen. Couldn't figure out which screen wanted to be on, so I went on both of them. <laughs> that halfway, half on each. But yeah, that can be fixed if you put in your uh, your uh, X render command in your opening file for it. I think I just had it set for one screen, but this is, since this is a video capture card, it's used at two screens. But I have to figure out how to set it so that it it only show one screen for both of them. That take a little work and research, which I don't have time for right now. But anyway, it works. So now I have i3 in there. See, but one of the program I saw here is juju at neofetch. Then take the yeah. Oh, install again. So I can do this on the computer, which has a little bit of lag on it. So it's uh, not very helpful. Yeah, there's all the dependencies I have to throw in there. This is not in the in there listed for libraries and stuff like that. And so the library depends. And there you go, Bluetooth. Dalton Booty 20.04 1 LS ECC. What I did on that was I saw, yeah, so if you put another one, it, it does the whole dynamic tiling on it. 
Super cool. Like I like it. My key bindings work on it. Yay, cool. That's installing the i3 window manager on a on a distro box of a of a set. Like I said, this isn't recommended by or supported by a OpenSUSE Micro OS desktop, but that's to be expected. It's kind of a odd case and you know, ran very narrow case for it actually makes practical. I mainly did so to see if I could do it or not. I did. Following the instructions on OpenSUSE Micro S. So I had to modify them a bit because these on regular regular distro. It's a little easier on regular distro because you can just move files where you want. <laughs> but I have to go into some transaction update type thing and go to root basically. So yeah. Pretty cool though. It works and it's so that was micro S with a I3 window manager installed in a distro box on Ubuntu, Ubuntu distro box we installed it on. How you accomplish that now? Sometimes you have to like you know finagle with it, do it a few times or some, reboot more once or some. You get uh, the transactional updates to take effect sometimes, or you just have to be careful not to screw it up too much. You know. So I hope you like this video, and if you do, click the like button down there and subscribe if you have a mind to, and we'll see you in the next video whenever that is. Do have an interview coming up, a live interview coming up in a couple of weeks, I think. First Saturday in, in uh, February, Nathan Wolf. Everybody want to be watching for that one. So until next time, may your lens force be with you. Bye.